And then there's this, these dangerous pranks preying upon parents and kids across the country. New analysis by the Washington Post shows a surge in school shooter swatting incidents. More than 500 at schools across the country in the last year. Swatting is when somebody makes a fake police report, in this case about a school shooter, to draw a large police presence to schools, and it creates a lot of panic and fear. The Post found in some cases these calls may be originating from far away, as far away as overseas, in a coordinated effort. Here now to talk about it, Tracy Walder, former CIA officer and FBI special agent. As far away as Ethiopia, in fact. Tracy. Yes, well, thank you for having me, Marnie. This is actually something we talk a lot about, quite frankly, in my criminal justice class that I teach in college. And it's something that is becoming more and more popular. It actually originated in the online gaming communities, where it sort of started with folks who are tech savvy, just like you mentioned, who can make these calls seem like they are coming from somewhere else. That's sort of the key here. And then once they're uncovered, law enforcement is able to sort of track them to their country of origin. But from a national security perspective, this could actually have much further implications than really just harming the schools themselves. Like what? You know, I think about the the attention it takes away um, from law enforcement, from legitimate issues, the resources that it takes away, as well as the mental toll, quite frankly, that it takes on some of these children um, at these schools who see this massive police presence there. You know, we're not thinking about the societal cost of this and what this is doing to innocent people, quite frankly. Yeah, it's terrifying, right? I mean, you don't know it's a hoax. You have to take every threat and every call seriously. I'm just curious about the motivation behind doing it. Do we even know why these pranks are happening? So the answer to that is actually it depends. And I'm sorry to you know have such an ambiguous answer, but really one of the first cases that came to national attention was an individual named Andrew Finch in Kansas. And that was because of a $5 gaming debt. But unfortunately, the swatting call was called to the wrong house and Finch was actually killed by police. So this can become deadly. In the gaming industry, it was used to sort of settle these scores or settle unpaid debts. Now, I think particularly when we're seeing that they're coming from, from foreign countries, part of me is wondering if this is part of a larger, broader scale attack um, by some of these countries to detour some of our resources. According to this Washington Post report, the FBI created a new database of swatting incidents. What do we know about that and the research and data they're compiling? Yeah, so I actually saw that database and I was looking at it. Really what they're compiling is to see where these are coming from and try to target where they're originating from so that we can either put sanctions um, on these countries or shut down um, who is making these calls. That's really the biggest thing that they're using this database for, as well as to look at hotspots upon which these are coming from and help schools put safeguards in place. Um, so that way the response time is perhaps a little bit different and we're not upsetting so many children children um, with some of these basically hoax calls, because that's what they are. Have there been arrests in connection to these swatter incidents? As far as I know, I'm not sure. I don't believe so. In the case of Finch, yes, two individuals were arrested. But what's really going to frustrate a lot of people is that they only received 18 months in prison and three years in prison. Someone died as a result of that swatting call, and that was the punishment. And so the reality is, is we do have laws against this. A lot of times they'll be charged with stalking, uh, false police reports, those kinds of things. It's a federal crime, and it can carry a very hefty sentence. But what we're seeing so far is not that have hefty sentence being levied. And I'm wondering about the immediacy of these calls. I mean, once you get law enforcement on the scene, how long does it typically take and what do they have to do to ultimately determine it was a hoax and clear the scene? So it's actually going to take a while because the reality is, is law enforcement, and rightly so, has to take all of these seriously. And in most of these cases, they are mobilizing their tactical or SWAT teams, which is very laborious. And they are going to have to go through and most likely evacuate the school, clear the school. All of that takes time. So you're looking at perhaps an hour or two of a loss of instructional time. And the calls, are they often coming in directly to the school? And in some of the Washington Post report, it's a voice that actually answers questions, so it's not automated. 
So most of them are actually going to the police departments um, and that there's a, a threat going on at that school. That's kind of the difference between what we see in a lot of the bomb threats that we've seen in the past is that they're going to police departments. And as a result of the threat that's being called into them be at the school, they're having to mobilize you know, their tactical branches to respond. So that's where most of them are going to. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.